Joey Gibson has been freed of all charges, cleared of all charges. He had been prosecuted with no evidence for three years. For three years, they had pursued him with uh, bogus riot charges. And the reality is he was doing nothing but exercising his First Amendment rights. I believe they knew that. We finally got the charges dismissed. Next stop, we're going back to federal court and we are going to sue the city of Portland and the Multnomah County for what they did over these last three years. And what and, and what are you suing them for? Uh, fabricating evidence, withholding evidence, political persecution? What that what does that lawsuit look like? It's abundantly clear that they prosecuted Mr. Gibson because of his political speech and no other reason. It's the two most stolen items in the world. No, it's not lighters and pens. It's your freedom and your income. Those are the two most stolen items in the world. And an individual, a lawyer that knows all about that, joins us now, Angus Lee, back on the InfoWars War Room, brought to you by InfoWarsStore.com. First, uh, Angus, I mean, you know all about the government stealing freedom. You've been fighting for freedom in the courts uh, with a lot of different cases and clients over the past couple years, including one Joey Gibson, in which you guys have had a recent legal victory. So I wanted you to come on here and make the announcement about Joey's legal victory and, and what that might mean for other uh, victims of political persecution right now in the United States of America, Angus Lee. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, bottom line up front, we had a massive, massive victory in Multnomah County, Oregon, Portland City, Antifa City. Joey Gibson has been freed of all charges, cleared of all charges. He had been prosecuted with no evidence for three years. For three years, they had pursued him with uh, bogus riot charges. And the reality is he was doing nothing but exercising his First Amendment rights. I believe they knew that. We finally got the charges dismissed. Next stop, we're going back to federal court and we are going to sue the city of Portland and the Multnomah County for what they did over these last three years. And what and, and what are you suing them for? Uh, fabricating evidence, withholding evidence, political persecution? What that what does that lawsuit look like? It's abundantly clear that they prosecuted Mr. Gibson because of his political speech and no other reason. There was no evidence. And we recently obtained an email in which the mayor, Ted Wheeler, was essentially uh, I think you could honestly characterize it as bragging about how the prosecution of Gibson and others chilled their speech. The charges in this case were originally brought right before a major rally, a major conservative rally was about to occur in Portland in August of 2019. And we believe, and we believe we will be able to prove that the mayor pushed this case all the way up and that there was a conspiracy between the mayor's office and the Multnomah County Prosecutor's Office to bring charges against Gibson and others with no evidence. And we proved finally that there was no evidence. And that's why the court dismissed the charges against Mr. Gibson and Russell Schultz. And the judge even went so far as to say he was bewildered as to why the state pursued those charges uh, against Mr. Schultz in particular for three years with no evidence. And he tossed those cases right out. So this is a civil rights violation. It's selective prosecution. It's political prosecution. It's conspiracy. I mean, look, Russell Schultz was one of the co-defendants whose cases was dismissed earlier this week. Russell was on video walking around. They had video from every angle. All he was doing was walking around at a protest. They presented false information in the grand jury. They falsely claimed in the grand jury testimony that Mr. Schultz was engaged in violent conduct. There was never any evidence of that. In fact, the video evidence made it very clear that that was not true. And they even took a team of U.S. Marshals to arrest him in the state of Washington and then have him extradited back to Oregon. So, I mean, they put a tremendous amount of uh, effort into this prosecution for three years, bringing in the federal authorities as well with no evidence, simply because Joey Gibson had the courage in 2019 to stand up. He stood up for the whole world. He went on his live stream. He went to an Antifa hangout, and he told the world and the city of Portland a message they needed to hear. He told them Antifa was violent and hateful. And if you watch his live stream from 2019, he stands in front of them peacefully 
and warns the city of Portland. He says, if you care about the city of Portland, you'll do something about these people. They're violent and hateful. And Antifa responded to being called violent and hateful by proving Mr. Gibson was right. They pepper sprayed him. They spit on him. They kicked him. They slapped at him. One of them even slashed at him with some kind of a metal weapon of some sort. I mean, just and unbelievable I'm guessing behavior. that the uh, prosecutors didn't spend a quarter of the time going after those violent criminals as they did Joey. In fact, there were two people on the Antifa side of the event that, that were identified to the law enforcement by name back in 2019. They knew exactly who they were. One of them was on video, engaged in a fist fight. They knew exactly who that was. They did. They took no legal action against him. Another one who's in the video that keeps circulating, who slaps at Mr. Gibson's phone and also is clearly on video kicking Mr. Gibson. We identified that person, sent an email and a letter to the main detective in the case asking for that person to be prosecuted, telling them that Mr. Gibson would cooperate in that person's prosecution. They, they, did, they took no action. They did not pursue that. It's abundantly clear that they chose sides, and it was because Mr. Gibson said something that Ted Wheeler didn't want said. Ted Wheeler didn't want somebody coming into town and saying Antifa was bad, dangerous, and hateful. And because Mr. Gibson said that, they brought all the power of the state to bear against him. And, you know, it's really, really shocking because Mr. Gibson actually cares about the people of Portland more than Ted Wheeler. He wanted Portland to be a safe place where people could walk the streets, not what it is today. And yeah, Joey's Antifa. been actually like trying to save the city. I remember having conversations with him, like listening to him talk about how in the Save the City, I'm just looking at him like, yeah, and you're going to serve ice cream in hell too, aren't you, Joey? But like he, he really has a big heart about this. He, you know, he goes to these events, he speaks his mind, and he remains personally peaceful. I've never seen any evidence of him engaging in any violent conduct of any kind. And he wants the people of Portland to have a nice place to live. And if Ted Wheeler would have listened to him instead of scapegoating him, he would have done something about Antifa. And he didn't. And as a result, Antifa basically tried to burn the city down in 2020 and 2021. And there's still a major problem. And, you know, it's really sad. You go through downtown Portland and it's all boarded up and there's all sorts yeah. of empty storefronts. Yeah. There's very few people walking around. And it's because they didn't listen when they were warned. Instead, they attacked the person who brought the truth. Now, you don't have to give away all your legal strategy or what to expect here, but I mean, in the process of discovery and what your your, your federal case is going to be, I mean, are, are you going to get access to emails or how do you plan on, on, on proving all of the political persecution against Joey? Oh, there's going to be an extensive discovery process. That is absolutely for sure. But you have to understand, we've been fighting this battle for three years now. It was originally filed in state court. We went up to federal court, uh, then back to state court. Now it's been finally dismissed in state court, and we will be going back to federal court. Now, the reason the federal court uh, issue is interesting is we originally sued the Multnomah County in federal court to stop the prosecution, saying it was a selective prosecution with no evidence. And uh, Multnomah County got out of that lawsuit. They got out of it by presenting misinformation to the court. They told the court, oh, no, there's other evidence that you're going to see. There's other evidence of violent conduct beyond these videos. Well, that turned out to be, as we always knew, completely not true. And so now we're going to go back to federal court, hopefully in front of that same federal judge, and uh, they're going to have some explaining to do on the, on the government side as to why they misrepresented the record to get out of federal court and why they pursued this prosecution of Russell Schultz and Joey Gibson with no evidence for three years. I mean, imagine, imagine feeling the entire weight of the state government, the city government, even bringing U.S. marshals in on somebody who simply stood at a protest. That's, that's most men would break from that pressure. Most men would take some kind of a deal. And I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to say kudos to Joey Gibson and Russell Schultz for having the courage to stand for what is right and having the courage to endure for three years that trial and that ordeal and not fold and have the faith in their legal team. Uh, it was a strong team and have the faith to, to, to go through that process and never surrender. Good for them. America needs more people like that.
I, I can't agree more. And I got to tell you, as somebody that sadly, one of many that doesn't have to imagine that, uh, Joey Gibson is an inspiration that there there is hope in the justice system. And I, and I do want to believe that Joey Gibson was an innocent man. And despite three years of political persecution, the charges have rightfully been dropped. Thanks to Angus Lee, the attorney here on with us today. Our mission here at InfoWars is very, very simple. Promote freedom, promote justice, expose the globalist, stop the new world order. 